Hey, hello everybody. I hope you had a nice week and welcome for being on live. Aujourd'hui, uh, aujourd'hui, yeah, I'm doing Franglish actually. <laughs> aujourd'hui, <laughs> today we are with Aurélie, our head of front end here at WeWeb, and she will show you how to develop custom Vue.js components to use on WeWeb, basically. To, I mean, to develop anything you want. Uh, I don't, know, I don't know which example you're going to show, Aurélie, but basically you can do like date mm. pickers, color yeah, picker, color maps, picker. color picker. So, yes. yeah. So let's get to it right now. Uh, and yeah, I there's cats like already. Yeah. And Hello, Stefan. The <laughs> there is two of them. The other one is behind here. <laughs> Just here. <laughs> so you have to. <laughs> Normally, you they will what? be quiet, but you never know. They like to participate, you know. They are watching me. Happy to see some uh, known name on the chat. Hello, Nastasia. Um, Joyce yes. is here too, and to answer you on the chat. I would say there is a lot of uh, friends of him on the chat. So if you are um, a slab of friends, <laughs> just say hi. So we know. Hey, Olivier. <laughs> so um, basically, what I want to explain today is um, I will just cut this because it's with this term. Yeah, uh, it's um, how to develop a component, but also when. And for that, I will try to explain a bit how WeWeb works before. Um, feel free to ask me question if it's not clear or if it's too much or not enough. Like we love to be inter interactive with the chat, so feel free to uh, to ask question uh, whenever you want. So basically, normally you recognize this. This is the WeWeb um, editor. Uh, and basically, each time you drop something um, in the editor, you are dropping a Vue.js component and you have different type of it. So it's a different component if you drop an image or if you drop a text. But they all work uh, in the same way, which is basically you describe in the configuration of this component what has different properties this component needs. And then WeWeb will be able to display an interface here to like it's a specific section. So it will let you um, have a, an interface for your user to modify these different settings. And then your component um, decide what to do with this different value. And WeWeb is handling the interface, is handling um, formula. You, if you want to have something which is bindable, it will handle uh, responsive, it will handle uh, translation if you want something uh, which depends on the local and all this different stuff. It's WeWeb who will handle it and you just describe what your component expects. And <clears throat> if you are curious, so I think there is some developer here, you can have an idea of what uh, it's looking like. Uh, very like there is a way to do that. So first you have this tab here, which is a dev tab. And here you see you have a toggle so you can have more information and um, basically you can uh, activate this and you will be able to see some technical information. And here, for example, you will have access to uh, the ID of the component. And here I can open my console and I will give you the tricks, but I can probably, I think I'm, I may copy paste it on the documentation one day, but it's just to give you a, an overview of the secret of WeWeb and how it's looking like behind. But basically what an object is um, in WeWeb, I will maybe make it uh, um, higher, something like that. So here you have a complete description of your object and this is what WeWeb uh, is storing. And you have this content here. So the content is what is specific to your component. And you have different key depending of if you are responsive in a different state and stuff like that. And you have different uh, value here. And basically this is what in, is in the database. And then we will um, work with that and give to your component um, like a compiled version of this with all value replace and evaluate. Uh, with all the different information, context, if you're on a repeat or this kind of stuff. Um, so basically that's that. So as I said, when 
do we need to develop a custom component and when do we don't need? Uh, basically, most of the stuff, if you just want to add logic, can be done in no code if needed. So if I take a look at the UI kit, here you will find a bunch of examples to a lot of stuff you can do. And here everything is in no code and you kind of develop a component in no code and this is totally possible. You will just link and use uh, workflows, variables, everything which is possible in the editor. But sometimes uh, something will be complicated to do um, in a no code way, but can be very easy to do uh, in a code way. Like sometimes just one line of JavaScript, but the interface of the no code is not really uh, well done for that. Or you need to integrate a third party's libraries, like for example, the Stripe component, if you want to have some payment, or I don't know, a very special um, uh, UX uh, on your form with drag and drop or something really hard to code. Uh, like to code in no codes, don't know if this is something we can tell, but in this case, you can go back to develop stuff and then uh, let them available on uh, WeWeb Editor. And basically all our components, so everything you see here uh, is um, a view component that WeWeb takes time to develop. And if you are curious, you can just open this dev tab and here you have access to public repositories and all, yeah, our, components, yeah, all our components are open source. So this is a way to like, if you don't know and you're afraid to start developing custom components, you can just take one of the existing one and fork it uh, to have like a base. Um, just be aware that because uh, we web components are aim to be very generic and to handle every corner case and use cases. Sometimes the code can be a bit like not complex, but can handle a lot of different options because, for example, for an input, we want every type of input to be available. And maybe that's not your case. And so you may want to simplify the code because you don't need to uh, handle all these corner cases. Uh, but you have very simple one, like the input one are very simple. Uh, you have one who just uh, are just wrapping um, another library, like the map element or all the chart element. And sometimes you are very complex one. Uh, like if you want, I think the more complex one we have right now, it's a data grid one. Uh, if one of the one I, I spend the most time. So if you want to take a look at what it can look like. Uh, this is one of the most advanced one. Um, but yeah, just feel free to take a look. Uh, also, uh, it's our choice to make it open source. So it means you can uh, inspire, you can fork, you can open issue, you can open pull request. Uh, we don't guarantee that we will merge them, but uh, if there is a bug or a feature uh, you need uh, for your project and you want them to be part of uh, the component for everyone, uh, feel free to do so. And we are completely open uh, about that. Um, Actually, we, I think we we already merged a pull request for Yes, we merged user. one on uh, data grid because somebody had um, an option to, um, to define the color of the selected uh, row on the data grid, which was basically adding a property and handle it on the code. And we take the pull request, we test that it was working and we match it and publish it. So and by the <laughs> way, the, the, the really cool thing if you do pull request to all, like repositories and projects is that you will help people having better a better UI kit because basically the whole UI kit is based on these repositories. So all the elements you use inside WeWeb, they're from here. Uh, so if you like want to improve our elements, you'll do this for everybody. And I find it a really cool thing to do, <laughs> helping <laughs> people. And also, yeah, spoiler alert, I say it, uh, I will say it like right now, because I'm pretty sure the question will show up. Uh, we, we have a plan on shipping a marketplace of components early next year, so 2023. So also every components you would make uh, develop uh, using 
uh, already is live today. You could uh, start selling them and using them for your clients or like other people um, early next uh, and next year. So that's our plan. Yeah. And also, if you are uh, starting to develop components, and I think there is a bunch of you in the chat I recognize who are doing that, uh, feel free to also give feedback to us. We are really trying to improve uh, the developer experience uh, on our site to be sure uh, your uh, job is as easy as possible. Uh, that's basically my daily job, so please feel free to contact me. Um, so something else you have in this dev uh, is the link to the documentation. Um, this is also a plan uh, to redo another time all this documentation and to merge it uh, with the user documentation of WeWeb to being able to like make link uh, between them. But for now, uh, base information about uh, what the different concept uh, about developing a WeWeb component and all the life cycle of the development are available here with some basic uh, cookbook um, section. And I would just uh, start and just basically use this documentation. So when you want to start to develop a component, uh, all you need is to have a node installed on your machine. Uh, just be aware that you need to have installed the correct version of Node. So uh, right now, um, don't take the very last one. Uh, just be sure you are under uh, version 16 or 14. So not uh, too recent, but not too old uh, either. But uh, I think we will probably uh, update the doc. <laughs> so you are sure you have the correct information. But I think this is one of the most pain point people uh, have uh, recently uh, is the, like with the install phase is just be sure to have the correct not version uh, if you are used to develop uh, web components this is just basic uh, stack uh, on your yeah. uh, computer and i, I send, uh, thank you I, <laughs> yeah i sent not a uh, url but also nvm not version manager really helpful if you have like multiple not version on your computer because reinstall it everything globally is not recommended obviously yeah. Uh, but I use it personally. Uh, it's really easy to use. I think you use it too, no? Yes, uh, I have a. I am on Windows, so I have the Windows version, which is like okay. uh, different uh, same name. It's like NVM Windows, but working in the same kind of uh, way. Uh, so here I will name my project uh, Color Picker because we will make a color picker. So when you run this uh, script. Uh, we, we use what we call a NPM template, so it's download, asking you a few questions and then we generate a skeleton uh, of um, a component to make it easy Sorry. to start working. We have Stefan asking what's your NPM version? Uh, yeah, when yeah. I will finish yeah. right now. Yeah. <laughs> Normally it's tied yeah, to right. your node version though. And that's my node version right now. Yeah. So I'm giving NPM you the whole information. <laughs> so this one is working. Um, but um, right now, this is what I'm using. And I know that we probably wants to um, upgrade uh, this uh, one day, but we will be sure to make it uh, announced to everybody. So I'm continuing. And here you have, um, so there is, um, different type of things you can develop for WeWeb. You have section elements and plugins. I don't want to talk too much about plugins because right now we are not uh, opening uh, plugin developments to external developers, but this will be uh, later. But this is a way to group different uh, functionality together. I have a bunch of elements, section, function, formulas, all working together and being able to communicate and base um, on a common state. So basically, on the WeWeb part, we have plugins for uh, all different database. Uh, like uh, the data sources that you know in the, the product, like Superbase, Zano. We have one yeah, for dates. Uh, but yeah. this will be open for developer as soon as uh, we have a better developer experience. And then you have section and elements. Uh, the main uh, in in the editors the difference is uh, an element in something you can drag and drop in um, any drop zone, 
and a section is the one with uh, the small um, let me show you this will be maybe uh, easier if I show you uh, the other one here uh, you can select with this button so basically the only difference is that a section uh, is always a root like it's always a root on your page and it's a good solution uh, if you really need to um, have complete uh, masters of the layout and you don't want this component to exist inside another one so on we website for example we have uh, modals modals it's a section where you really want to uh, it to exist in its own and not inside something else so this kind of components can be section but most of the time you will probably go uh, with and the um, elements uh, because there is much more option it's uh i um both in the development you have more option available and also for um the user who will use your components they will have uh, more flexibility uh, to use it yeah for example if you want like a real uh, use case a section could be a navbar, a hero section uh, on top of a landing page, this kind of things when an element is like a button, a text or like a form. So things that you would place inside the, se the, the section. Yes. So here I've selected an element, I've given name and I have uh, here um, a folder. Uh, we will just open this folder right now. And I'm clicking all of my content, but that's fine. Nothing to hide here. Uh, <laughs> where is my color picker? Oh, I, I create it on the uh, on the root. That's fine. <laughs> nice. Yes, I'm trusting myself. So this is basically the skeleton of your um, element when you create it. So uh, all this file is normally uh, like normal web standard stuff. Uh, if you take a look at the package uh, .json stuff, you will see that there is a bunch of script available. And the only dependencies is our CLI, which will let you build the component. Uh, please don't touch that, <laughs> because we are using it uh, when you import your component inside the editor. This is the script we are running to build your component. And so, so the only things which is uh, special uh, for WeWeb development is this uh, config file. So often you will uh, see this two uh, W uh, in all WeWeb related stuff. Um, we call that WoWo. I don't know if this is really easy to pronounce uh, for English speaker, but it's worked well in French. Uh, and it's basically the prefix we use everywhere for WeWeb. Uh, so every time you see a WoWo stuff, it's basically internal stuff for WeWeb. So WoWo config is configuration for WeWeb. So this is, uh, this can be a JSON or a JavaScript file. Um, most of the time, this will be a JavaScript file because it lets you uh, have more option. And this will describe uh, what your component is doing. You have a lot of options. They are all available in the description uh, of the documentation. Uh, but we will go through some of them today when building our components. Here you have a very basic uh, configuration, uh, which is uh, having a label, so a way to um, identify your component when you drop it and they have no name. And so I will change it to color picker. This is a color picker. And in the meantime, I will also uh, start the NPM install in the background so we don't waste too much time. And then you have an important uh, key, which is properties, which is basically where you will be describing all the different properties of your components. And here um, we have the key. So we say that there is a property text color. Uh, we give it a label and a type, and the type will define how it will appear in the side panel. So it's not a type checking. It's just uh, to know uh, how it will appear uh, in, um, like, for example, up, let me give a component, how it will appear here. So if you say it's a color, this will appear as a color picker. If you say it's a text, it will be a text box and stuff like that. Uh, you can have default value. You can uh, describe if it's uh, bindable. 
uh, bindable uh, if it's responsive and a lot of different options we will be able to see later uh, when we will have the use case but basically you describe all the different properties of your component and then you have um, your uh, view component so basically um, a we web component it's just a view component it's a normal component so there is nothing uh, special so if you know how to dive in before before to continue maybe uh, does everybody is used uh, to view or like view components at least in the chat so that we can adapt maybe to your level i mean it's pretty easy to use view components because hopefully like the syntax is like, uh, <laughs> quite uh, it's not as complex as react components for example that would be cool to know if you're depend used to you already but yeah sorry maybe, which we depend who you ask people prefer react but it's just yeah because it's a more let's not go into this debate because a long time ago i loved gsx <laughs> now i'm like yeah <laughs> but that's another um, story <laughs> but basically for people who know um web but not quite familiar with view a uh, view file is just uh, three parts one with the html uh, one with the logic in the JavaScript and one with the style. Oh yeah, Stefan, for example, is not yet. Yeah, I've seen it. He already developed some of components. So he knows okay, it. so <laughs> okay. But uh, Stefan, if you are interested, I've seen some of your components. So if you want, like a one-hour briefing about what to do and what not to Ooh, do in view. One hour with <laughs> already. <laughs> That's <laughs> something rare or... to get. <laughs> It's what I'm doing. I love to teach you. That's really cool. Um, but basically here you have your component, uh, your logic and your style. Uh, something which is cool with you is that you can sculpt uh, your CSS, which is basically important because your component will be dropped uh, in a page when you don't want to leak your style and uh, to other components. So using the sculpt, you will be sure that uh, all the CSS you are defining are only applied to your component and not yeah. other components. And this is really important. Otherwise, yeah, you get we like had a few bugs in select leaking. stuff because of that. So we but know also, it can happen to everyone. <laughs> just uh, as a side note, because a lot of people <laughs> right now they are asking on why in WeWeb you can't like change the design for all the components at once in the project it's because we use this component-based approach for CSS, so we don't have like huge. Yeah. CSS spreadsheets like people used to do in the web like five or ten years ago because yeah. every everything is in components and this is coming yeah. actually this is a feature yeah. that will you'll get reusable component that will inherit from each other but it, because your CSS is really scoped to your component only your element and can't be used by other uh, elements on yeah. the page and each component have its own logic and part of this logic can rely on the different properties so for example here uh, when you start with a template you have a text and uh, you have a style of this text which is depending on the property text color we have seen on the config.js uh, file so for a view component you have a property props which describe uh, basically the input of your component and what is uh, WeWeb is the fact that we will use this component and pass to it some special props. So you will be able to have information and you just have to describe these props to use them. So I already talked about this special content stuff, which is the configuration and different value of your properties that WeWeb is handling for you. So this is probably one of the one you will include every time, but there is a bunch of them you can uh, also have. And so here I'm saying I will receive an input the content and then I can use this content uh, to have the logic of my component. So here I'm just saying I am applying a style with the text color. And so I have a text, which is I am a custom element and it's working. So how I can develop that? So I will start a, a local version, uh, a local web server, which will serve uh, my component. So I will be able to um, put it uh, on the editor. And so I will be able to live develop it. Uh, by default, it's starting on the port 8080. You can change that if you already have something running here. Um, and here, which is important, is you need to go to the dev editor mode. Uh, this is due to the fact that uh, being able to do 
um, live code uh, of a component uh, need uh, more uh, code. And in this version of the editor, we are including more core, more code. So you are able to do uh, local development. So I'm clearing a previous version of me working. And something you also need to know is that when you are working on the dev mode, uh, nothing is synchronized uh, with, um, with the server. So when I'm working on the editor, normally each time I drag and drop something or I change a property, there is um, a WebSocket open and every change is live, uh, is saved uh, with the uh, WeWeb server. Here, because you are developing something which maybe is breaking uh, your um, your application or maybe corrupting your uh, data, we choose to not save anything when you are working in the dev mode. So don't be surprised if you make some change and then you refresh your page, this change will not be saved. Uh, then to start working here, we can say we want to start to work with a local uh, element. So here, and something you can do is either say, I want to work on a complete new component, or uh, you can say my component uh, is just a new version of an existing component. So please replace all instances on this page by my local version. Uh, this is very useful if you have components uh, which need a lot of data or binding or some UX settings to be easy to work with. And so you have your existing app and you just want to test the new version or uh, and new properties. So you open your existing app and you just say replace all the instance by my local version. And you don't have to redo all the settings to make your component work. Uh, here, this is a completely new component, so I'm choosing custom element. I can name it uh, whatever I want. And here, um, because um, WeWeb is working with HTTPS, uh, we have a SSL certificate, and because we are in development mode, uh, this certificate is not a um, certificate established by a very well-known instance. It's a local certificate. So in Chrome or in other browsers, you need to inform Chrome that you are agreed to use uh, this and you know what yes. you are doing. So this and is the cat one are code. And here, and you, it's just a way to validate and here you can see uh, that now you can access uh, it. And now the component is available and you can drag and drop it from here. And so I have it and as I said here, if I change uh, my text property, my component is reacting to that. And this is everything is doing by WeWeb. You just have to describe that you want text color property and what you want to do with it. And here I can change uh, whatever I want. And here this will update. And I hope it's working now because it was not working in the previous life. But here it's working. You see the component is up to date now. And I have my cat tail on my mouse and I cannot work. So I will just put the cat down. Here we are. Bye, um, cat. <laughs> bye. <laughs> it's not happy. But normally people <laughs> love cats. So this will be my fault and not his fault. But that's fine. So <clears throat> this is basically uh, the very base um, of the web component. You describe your content and you use your content. Um, here, uh, what we are going to do is we are going to do um, um, an input. Um, so here, um, I love to... Um, so having your design, um, it's always a bit complicated, not, not complicated in a technical way, but uh, in a designing way, you have to think about how your component uh, will behave um, with um, what we call the, the generic um, component, um, the generic settings. So here, uh, when you are picking any elements, you have this specific section, which is the content uh, coming from yours. So you are completely master of what you want to put here and what you want to do with it. But you have all the other section with, for example, the background, the spacing and stuff like that. And all these properties, they are the same for all elements and they are handled by like a master wrapper component, which is uh, shared 
uh, with all the different components. So if you want your component to play well in WeWeb, be aware that the, the user will expect that if you put some padding here, uh, you want it to work. And here, if I put, for example, a div around my input, the padding will be around the input. But if I take my input and I put it directly on the root of the element, here we go, then the padding will be applied inside uh, the input. So this is really a matter about how you want your components to behave and what will be the more um, good experience for your user. Do you want all the margin padding background to apply on which um, part of your um, code. Uh, here, I will put a div because um, I will be uh, adding some other stuff than just the input. But here, I will have an input and as I said, I want to do a color uh, picker. So I'm a bit lazy and I will just use the color picker native uh, from Google Chrome. So here, if I do that, I have a basic color uh, picker uh, available and um, I will just had uh, I will just delete that because I don't uh, need it uh, and um, I will add um, something here don't be afraid this is just a few codes <laughs> And here I'm creating something uh, which is uh, reactive. So it means it will change and I want my component to react to this change. And I will just bind it to my input here. Which means I can use it just after. And here I've break something, that's fine. Let me just refresh drag and drop my components again and I've done something wrong so I'm just checking what I've done wrong and yeah. I just probably forget to import my reference that's fine <laughs> so it's basically a developer uh, life you forget an import and it's breaking everything so you open your console and you discover you make a basic mistake um, so normally your component is uh, auto reloading every time, but sometimes here uh, when you are breaking completely the components, you may need to refresh to make it work. And so here, for example, now when I change my color, I have a variable holding the value and I make it display. And basically this is what I want my input to look like is having here uh, a color picker and then having um, the value display just after sorry for the cat and yeah the cat returns <laughs> nice <laughs> yeah you always return <laughs> no matter how hard you push it will win it will win in the end yeah I'm in the sure end. no but i'm fine in, in, in half an hour the, the food will be there and they will just run to the food so that's fine <laughs> so basically here you have your component and then uh one uh cool things you can do uh with WeWeb is that sometimes you will want to use another existing component. So for example, here, this is a text. So I want to master what is displayed in this text. So this is the current value of the input. Uh, but I also want uh, the user to being able to select it and to change, uh, for example, the typography, uh, the size, and uh, this kind of stuff. And here, I don't want you to um record all we have done for the text component so what you can do is just use a text component and this is uh easy to do all you have to do is to declare um a property here so i will just call it label component and i will hide it so it means it will not appear in the side panel because it does not make sense to uh, make um an element appearing in the side panel there is no like ux interface to edit it and then all i need to do is to define a default value uh, to describe what type of object this is so 
it's a special key you need to put here and then you'd have a different uh, type and here I will say I want um, a text to be here. Uh, the type here is normally an ID. Uh, this is the ID you see here. If you have uh, activate the dev um, uh, settings, it's the base ID you see here. So this is basically the ID of the type of component and every component has different uh, base ID if they are a different type. And the UID is much more the ID of an instance of uh, this component. So because we don't want you to put this and do not really understand what we are doing, we have some aliases uh, on our side. And so most of the major, uh, the more used components, they all have uh, an alias. So this is easier to write through here. When you write uh, text, we make to this. Uh, but if you other components, components to, um, Just so ready. I hope everything okay for the viewers because your connection is dropping drastically right okay. now. So maybe we'll just wait a bit. Okay. like. <laughs> Yeah, the audio is weird and like the video too. Yeah. The video is frozen. So yeah, let's wait for like Belgium to get back internet right Belgium. now. <laughs> Belgium, Belgium, <country. laughs> so the countryside of Belgium. So maybe it's just my neighbors who are doing stuff. But... Uh, <laughs> downloading <laughs> stuff right now, watching yeah. Netflix. <laughs> so maybe that's, that's um, maybe children which are downloading or playing video game. I think it's getting um, better. When it, it's better. Uh, yeah. Where does it start to be weird? So I know what you start. Uh, but basically here you can put any ID you want. Uh, just use the basic one if you need a basic uh, elements on our side. Uh, but it, what can happen is you may want to have several components who work together because having separate components make it easier to customize like the background, the padding, or being able to select and define custom properties. So we we have, for example, on our side, as uh, a Kanban, for example, it's a uh, different columns and the columns is an element. This element does not really make sense outside of the combo, but it's still um, um, an independent element so you can select it and play with it. If you are in this type of use case, uh, just put the base UEID here and this will work. But you will not have this uh, cool uh, alias because we do that only for uh, WeWeb components. So here I have defined that I want the component, which is a text, and then I want to use it here. So I will uh, use a special element, uh, which is WoWo element for the web element and uh, I will uh, bind it to the properties I've just created. So I bind it here and so we will know that this component have a child component and that I need to render this, this child component here. And uh, because this is a text and this is something we still need to document but you can have a lot of examples. Uh, on our components, uh, all the different um, elements can have props uh, which are used when you are rendering them programmatically. So your components, they have properties available uh, to the side panel and to be um, um, set by the user, but you also can define them to have properties who can be uh, passed by your parent. And for example, the um, Text element, they have a special properties which let them pass um, a text property. So I can overwrite the text and don't let the user change it because here I want the text to always be uh, the value of my input. And if I go back here, I will probably have to uh, refresh because I was doing strange stuff. And I can drag and drop. And here I have my component, and if I change, I see the value. But here, this now, if you see at the navigator, it's a text element, 
So I can select it, I can change its, uh, its size, I can change its color, I can change a lot of different stuff. Um, I will just uh, add probably here um, some CSS to make it look nicer. Uh, please don't um, call your component with a WoW -wo prefix. It's like reserved for we web components. You may have conflict with us, uh, but feel free to use your own prefix depending on your own uh, company or agency. And here I will just uh, put it here and it will be probably nicer. Yes, and so here they are now in the same row, and but here I can, for example, add a margin on the right, and here I can. And having that um, as a custom component will give much more freedom to your user, which is something you may or may not want. So for example, if you are developing a component for internal use, uh, like a full design system when you want everything to always look like the same, you will probably just add code a text here because you will want the typography to always be the same, as the spacing to always be the same. But if you want your components to be much more customizable by any by anyone, you can just have this option. And then if you want, if you are happy with how it's looking like, uh, save uh, this. Uh, settings to uh, you UI kit, and then people will be able to drag and drop use this um, set of settings. But if needed, we'll be able to change them. It's basically your call to choose uh, what freedom you want to give to your user, and it's really depending uh, what is your goal by developing this component. Sorry, the cat. I need to access my mouse. Thank you. So uh, first uh, usage here, uh, using another uh, element. I don't know if everybody is still here, still alive, still following. <laughs> I don't oh, see still have, uh, 16 people on the, on the live right now. <laughs> I don't see any question on the chat, so I don't know if this is because I'm pretty clear. Or very That's clear. why. <laughs> um, now, uh, something you may want to do if you are doing inputs. Um, here, if I'm uh, going to uh, uh, reweb inputs, so like any inputs, uh, normally you are used here to have uh, access to a variable. And uh, for some components, uh, it may be useful to expose some properties of your element as an element, what we call a components variable. Uh, so that they are available to be selected in formula or in workflow. So it's totally making sense for uh, form components, but it can also be useful for exposing a state, for example. Um, take example of a tab. You maybe want to expose what is the current index of this tab, uh, make it um, uh, being able to be set from the ex from an external, so for example, for a from a workflow. Um, so you can either define this variable as read only, as my component has its own logic to handle that, but just expose it to you if you want to read it. Uh, that's the case, uh, for example, on the data grid to, I don't know, have the selected row. And you also may want to expose something which will be settable. Uh, I don't know if this is a word in set, settable. In, in, in English, it's something which exists, or am I doing something very Frenchy? I that don't know. Can be set up. It can so be set. Yeah, maybe. It can be set. They from, set. Uh, they can be set, yeah. <laughs> from the, the next tunnel um, stuff. So it's really up to you, but I will just show you quickly how you can do that. And because I never uh, know exactly the correct syntax, I will show you how a real dev will do without lying to you. A real, a real <laughs> dev. What's a real dev? Yeah, a real <laughs> dev is not somebody pretending you know everything. So <laughs> I will just, just come back. <laughs> <laughs> I will just come back to my uh, to WeWeb input um, elements uh, to remember how the syntax is working. Um, and by the way, on this point, because um, 
like even already is going back on components. It's on our plan. We're currently revamping the user docs and creating an academy to let people learn about visual programming. So how to do no code, but also the developer documentation would be a part of this. So we're like in a few weeks, we currently will revamp everything and you'll be able to like have a better documentation on all this, uh, like developing a component in WeWeb basically. So uh, how it's looking like? Um, basically, I'm using uh, one of the um, strengths of Vue 3, which is using Composition API, which is a piece of code you can use and have a um, lot of things uh, wrap. Uh, so it's typical Vue, it's not something uh, from uh, WeWeb. Uh, but here we are um, using one which lets you define a variable uh, that WeWeb will be able to understand, expose it on the editor, make it available and stuff like that. Uh, it's neat uh, to have the props here and then you need just to add um, the ID of the elements because to create the variable we need to know uh, the ID. So it's also a props uh, we are giving uh, to your component, you just need to declare it uh, to have access to it. And then you have a name by convention, all our input have uh, the name value. But if your component is defining different variables, you can uh, name them. So for example, in the data grid, you have the selected uh, variables, you have uh, um, the sort soon. Uh, in development, you will have the sort. Uh, variables you have like you can have several on the same component then you have the type and the default value um, something I'm like to do when I'm doing this kind of stuff is as soon as you do that uh, you let your uh, user basically able to pass you anything and um, I can say to you that when you let them do anything, they will probably do something you are not expecting and you don't want your component to break. So for example, if you expect your variables to be an array and manipulate that, like uh, calling uh, array uh, function on it, um, you are not 100% sure that they will not put something which is not an array uh, inside of that. So what I love to do is to have a computed uh, which will handle this and just be sure that I'm always having the type uh, I'm expecting. WeWeb is already doing a bunch of uh, verification here, but I love to add this extra. And I also think it's um, like maybe um, better, like just my kind of how I love to develop stuff, but it's not, it's up to you about how you want to do that. So here I will just set if my value is uh, a string. Oops. And if this is a string, I'm returning it. If not, I'm returning an empty string. And then I'm defining a set because I want this value to be uh, updated. And I will just call the setter I have uh, from here. Uh, if something is not clear here, uh, please uh, ask on the chat. But um, if you want to know more about uh, this setup function and composition API, you can refer to Vue 3 uh, documentation, which is really amazing. And having this special uh, computed with a getter and a setter is also something available on the Vue 3 documentation. And here, uh, everything will work as same as before because I've declared I've declared my computer with the same name, so I don't have to change anything on my template. But now it will read the value from uh, the variable, and when I will set it, it will set the variable. So if we take a look back here, uh, we just refresh because I've changed a lot of logic in my component. Oops, oh, I'm in the incorrect tab, sorry. And here now, I will just drop my color picker and just, <laughs> sorry, I have to some mistake. I did not refresh it up. 
here we go and we want to drop our color picker and now if i open it i see that i have a color picker value on the components variable and that's when i change it it's changed here but it's also changing here obviously user will be able to use this variable in workflows yeah. for example inside that or, or in a formula so for example if i want my text yeah. to change depending on that i will just here bind my text color and i will just bind it to uh, the color picker value and so now i've just code a uh, color picker stuff and if i change my value here my text is changing color amazing <laughs> Nice. It, it's it's a, it's a basic example here, um, but it's up to you to do what you want. But here we have seen uh, different things, uh, how to create a component, how to use a child component, and how to bind it to a component variable. So not every web component will will have this because sometimes your logic is one hundred percent internal and you don't want to expose anything because it's not needed. But uh, if you are developing an input, basically you will need this feature. Uh, something we can, uh, if people are still here and still interested, uh, something we can also do is exposing well, different... People are still here. <laughs> people are still here, perfect. Because um, we had a mind blowing <laughs> in the chat. So apparently you're doing amazing things already. With a color picture. <laughs> Are so you now sure? you can just develop the Stripe component yeah, <laughs> from zero in <laughs> 20 minutes, please. <laughs> or doable. Um, <laughs> or <Or> challenges. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not today, but yeah, I, I think I, it's doable. Um, something else also um, is normally you are used here to have uh, sometimes workflows. So you have basic triggers for your workflows and you may be interested to exposing uh, special workflows depending on your um, on your components. So for example, on our side, on a form component, we have a special submit component. And on most of our input, we love to have um, an on change event so people can react to uh, the fact that the component like is changing. Here it could be on color change, for example. On color change, we can do something, for example. Um, oh, nice. We can do something when this is opening or we can do something when it's closing. Like it's really depending on how your component is, uh, what your component is doing. Um, I don't know. Like, Let's I do that could... then. No, I can no. just do that. Uh, it's it's just it's not the same. Because we've got some some time to like go over the hour. Uh, yeah, I sure. know that already is available. I am. So if people want to see it, I mean, I've never seen <laughs> how to add uh, <laughs> like events to workflows. So I'm even interested. <laughs> so um, basically, um, you need to declare. Uh, so it's this is typical uh, view. So you have inputs and can also have outputs. And so in WeWeb, uh, we handle a bunch of different outputs you can emit. And one of them is I want to trigger um, a special event from my component. Uh, and I just need, uh, as I said, I'm always not 100% sure of the syntax. Yes, it's trigger event result here. S. So this is for make it work in the JavaScript part, but you also need to make it available in the interface of the editor so that people will be able to select it from uh, the, um, the select on the workflow. And for that, this is also a line you just add on your uh, configuration. And here, as I said, I'm always here you have a special key trigger event which lets you have uh, describe what are the different events your component is emitting. Okay, 
so we just format everything. So there will be a name. So this will be the technical internal name. Then you have the label, which is what will be displayed in the editor for your user. And then you have a special key event, uh, which lets you describe in a skeleton uh, how your uh, event will look like so that people ha will have this skeleton on the Explorer. So um, let me explain that maybe clearer. For example, here, if I just go on an input and I want to add a workflow component on the on change event, and I have, I don't know, any action, I don't really care, I just want something I can play with the Explorer. Um, here on the workflow, you have access to the event. And we, because here we are not uh, executing your JavaScript, we have no idea what your events can look like. So providing it um, on this uh, configuration will give us a guess about what it's looking like. And so it will make them available on the Explorer for user to being able to easily uh, select uh, the value. Uh, we are also working, I, I don't know if this is in production or still in testing on our uh, side, but now when you will emit some event on the editor, we will save that. So if you have very complex event data structure, they will be available if you trigger the event once. Um, Olivier is asking if there are doc about this. I think not yet, no. So basically, if you go to the development uh, documentation right now, you have a small description of uh, like all I have done with uh, how to open, how to trigger, how to push in production, uh, what are the different uh, properties. So basically, walk through. Um, and then here you have access to API. And when you go to API, you have much more uh, precise information about different um, configuration um, available and what are the different uh, value and properties you can set. So you have much more, like it's much more technical uh, description of all the different options. And also, uh, if you want to have an idea about how it's working, just take a look at our um, at our custom component uh, code and a published component. Yeah, um, for example, here, uh, basically the input is using it. So all our component uh, who can have a complex event. I think um, that the grids and Kanban are using this because yes, got the map also yeah. is doing some yeah. custom events. But this is a feature uh, we have pushed recently, uh, not triggering uh, events, but the fact uh, to extract complex event data for some advanced component. And I'm just not sure right now if it's in production or not. But when it will be in production, or right now, if it's already in production, uh, you will have an example on the map, for example, uh, which will have a special method uh, to describe. Frankly, it is. is. <laughs> <laughs> so people are more aware. So I think if we text. just jump to the map component, uh, because map is one of the complex one, and we go on the configuration, uh, here, for example, uh, we have description of the map click. You see, we have a skeleton of what it's looking like. And we also have this special key here, which is a get test event, which is a way to just um, trigger um, um, an internal function of your components to have a more advanced um, version of this event display in the Explorer. Uh, here, why is it useful? For example, here we have a marker, mouse over or mouse click, and this will expose the data you bind your map to. So we cannot guess it, we cannot write in the configuration how it will look like, because it will really depend on what your data is looking like when you bind it to the component. So we just give uh, a special function for that. So this is very advanced uh, usage. Like, I hope not everybody is lost, but this is something you can do. 
to make uh, life easier for your user uh, for more complex components. And having that, uh, we let people have uh, access to all the data on a marker and make it easier for them to select uh, on a formula and on the Explorer a very deep uh, data key, which is uh, probably uh, more useful. So if you want to know how it's looking like, just uh, take a look at the map component. And here's a get marker test event. It's um, a function you will retrieve uh, in the element here uh, on a different method. You will probably, yes, get marker testament here. And here you have a way to have access to that. Okay, uh, so I al already forgot what I was doing. Oh, yes, we wanted to add um, an event. So here, uh, I'm just going back to my super uh, existing component. As I said, I'm not magic. I cannot remember everything. I just know. Hello. I'm writing that all the day, but I always forget. So don't forget to add the trigger event in the emits property of your component. And then each time you want to trigger it, we will just emit this uh, component with the good um, here. This is basically what I want. And I think the best is to put it where it is, where is my, so as you say, is it, uh, maybe later we can just go through a more complex component if you want to have a, an overview of how it can look like when we make uh, advent comments, but here, this is what I'm doing. So I'm saving that and here on my set value, I will just also emit this event. So I'm emitting the trigger event event. And then what uh, we web is expecting is an object with uh, the key of the event you want to trigger uh, in the name property and an event, the, the real event you want to uh, emit. And here, what I want to emit is an object with a key uh, value. And that's basically it. So if I go back to where it is, Kat, you, <laughs> I can't see what I'm doing. Thank you, Kat. Uh, so here now, um, if I go to my uh, components here and I add a workflow, I will have the on change event. And you see that when I create it, the workflow, um, it's automatically used on change as the default because probably the most used. And it's because here I've put the key default. So if you have an option with the key default, this will be um, the option used to create new workflows. And we've got a question. Can we publish to production using custom components? We should just be making just making sure sorry yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah you can i mean <laughs> i mean every web component is basically a custom component so yes. yeah you're using already you're already it's using the apps in production everything. yeah <laughs> so no problem i will i will um uh, show you just after how to push in production and use that in production because here we are doing everything on the dev environment but after that you can push this on your dashboard and make it available so here I have the on change event and I can just add a custom JavaScript uh, here. This is how I love to test uh, my stuff. And I'm just permitting, uh, when I'm not sure, I'm just doing that, yes. And here um, I will be able to check that I'm doing things correctly. But here, normally, perfect, it's not working. Probably done something wrong. What I have done wrong. Yeah. The classic. Uh, the demo effect. 
Solo es that. Why? I'm just checking I've done something. And here I have the set. I have my trigger. Now it should work. Uh, let me just refresh just in case. But believe me, this is how every WeWeb component is working. So here you will see something which can be a bit um, um, painful as a developer. Is, as I said, we don't, um, we don't save anything. So every, for example, uh, workflow um, I define, uh, this will not uh, be saved. So every time I need to test it, I need to write, rewrite it, which can be a bit painful if you have a lot of settings. So this is why I advise you to have a first version of your component. And then when you go to the developer mode, you say, I want to use existing data on the page and replace my component with a new version I'm using locally. So you don't have to redo everything. So is it working better? Yes, just that, that was just that. And now I have a bunch of uh, updates uh, working and console logging, and I should probably so do you should, you should show how it works in a real workflow because console logs, it's for developers. Yeah, but I don't know so. what to do. I just want to prove it's working. <laughs> you could, um, I don't know. Uh, just normally drag and drop an alert and change the color. And when you drop, no, uh, I don't know, or just I a variable. I mean, here you already have an internal variable, so that doesn't really make sense. But as I said, maybe you don't you don't need this workflow. It's just something we tend to use um, to have like a basic uh, uniform experience on all our inputs because you never know how you our user will use it, and we try to have very generic component. Uh, but maybe you would really don't need it. But basically, you will be able to have all the different. Um, event you want, depending on the logic of your component for a Stripe payment, this will be a payment success, a payment error of uh, this kind of stuff. On the data grid, this will be on selection, on submission. Um, on the map, you have seen that we have a bunch of events uh, trigger each time you over a marker or you click on a marker on the map of this kind of stuff. Um, for example, in the, we have a video component and we are wrapping all the SDK of the video player. So you have uh, WeWeb uh, triggers, WeWeb workflow available to interact with your video. This is also something available. Um, so people were asking, uh, what do we do if we want to um, publish that and use this in production? So basically, you will go back here to uh, your dashboard. So this is uh, my dashboard. And here you have access to components tab. And then you have elements section and plugins. Uh, so you will just go to the correct section, depending. Uh, so plugins uh, will be removed soon, as I said. We don't want to open it for now. But um, elements here. Uh, you will just do here, import elements, and then you will have to select um, uh, a GitHub source. So your component need to be pushed on the GitHub uh, repository. Uh, and a public one. Public. Uh, I think private, private too. Because we okay. are using your GitHub uh, access. Uh, need oh, okay. to double check, but normally, yes. And so here you select your components. Uh, you give it a name and then it will be registered uh, on. So it's per workspace. So we web components, it's just we have a special workspace with we web, which are available for everyone. But if you define one on your own uh, workspace, this will be only available for you and people who are working in the same workspace. So at here the moment, you because it. we have a feature under development soon to let people, uh, like to invite people to design systems and components. Uh, to Sorry, have a spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> we are doing so much stuff every time that if Simon, <laughs> I'm saying something, it's already uh, obsolete. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and here you will have a way to manage all your custom components. And 
basically they will have a version. I advise you to not do what we are seeing here, but every time you publish <laughs> a new version, uh, like a significant new version of your components, just uh, here uh, use semantic uh, version to update uh, on the package.json the version of your component, and this is what will be used here. Uh, this will be I love key. how you say, like, do not do what we are doing, basically. Uh, <laughs> it's not a good convention because it's it's <laughs> testing components. And then you will be able okay. to select uh, the version you want to use. And if your version is breaking something, you can just roll back to a previous version. Um, and that's basically it. Uh, and when you will update uh, the code on GitHub, this will trigger uh, a hook on our site to rebuild your component with the new version, but this will not change the version used in the editor. You will need to change the version manually. This is to prevent uh, breaking your website when you don't want to. If Maybe you can show it with the color picker and then we can use it in a project. Uh, I need to push it no? on... Uh, I need to push it on... Uh, on a GitHub. On GitHub? Yeah. I can do it, but I can just use an existing one. But um, okay. so here, what I want to do is sometimes you may not see that the hook uh, are worked. It can happen sometimes. You can just go here and force uh, the GitHub hook to execute and to rebuild your component from the current uh, file version in your GitHub. And also, when this is done, then you can go back on uh, your project. And what uh, I advise you if you are uh, developing a completely new component. So when you have done that, like uh, uh, make it available um, as what you have done, it's just make we web aware that you have a component and that the source code is that. But then when you do that, it will only be available in this dev panel, which is a panel not everybody uh, open. Uh, and then it's fetching because I have a lot of that uh, here. And so you see, because I have access to all WeWeb one, uh, you have access to all the different uh, components. What I advise you is to drag and drop uh, it. So for example, I can drag and drop the basic input. And you see that the inputs drag and drop from the source code and the inputs uh, drag and drop from the UI kits. They are not really looking like the same. The, the one I'm drag and dropping from the UI kit, it's already looking nice with some basic uh, like paddings and uh, placeholder and some borders and some nice looking stuff, uh, which is Something I advise you then is to not handle that in your code because this is something which can be set from the WeWeb editor interface. But you just develop what is really the logic of your component. You publish it on WeWeb, then it's available here as a pure uh, source code. You drag and drop it. Uh, as I have done it with the form. Then you play with the editor um, functionality to make it look what seems to be the best, uh, like easy to use first version uh, of your component. So I don't know, put some, uh, some border here and I want it to be uh, this color and this kind of stuff. So this is what I want my inputs to look like uh, when it's drag and drop. And then you add this version to your UI kit and all the other user which are not um, user, uh, developer user, they will never go to this uh, dev tab. They will always go from the UI kits tab. And basically, this is oh. what we have done with all the WeWeb components here. We've got a question. I'm not sure to understand. Can I remove it manually, the version on that panel? For example, uh, I have no, here two X toggle. Possible. Yeah. Because, uh, each time you have a version, uh, what we have is. Uh, extracting some files and put them on uh, on our uh, host uh, service. So it requires to delete that. Um, I will just push it to the dev team that it can be a required uh, stuff to be able to delete an existing version. Uh, but for now, it's not available as a uh, as a feature. 
sorry. <laughs> but basically what I'm doing is I'm using a dev branch and uh, what you can do is uh, have your personal workspace uh, develop on this branch or just develop locally. And when you are happy, you update your uh, version, you merge it on the branch, which is used on the WeWeb hooks. And then it updates only when you push to the main branch. Uh, if it's really, really uh, painful, Stefan, just drop a message to the team. We can maybe do something, but right now it's not easy, like just not to click. Uh, but if it's a recurring uh, asking for people, we will be glad to add the feature. Um, I add once more time, it's very important for you to, for us, to have feedback from you about all the developer experience, because right now the most, the user who uses the most all of that is us. Because as you have seen, uh, all WeWeb components, which are developed by the internal team, they are just using exactly the same uh, set of function I've uh, um, show you. And we have like 144 components uh, at the moment, uh, growing every day. But it's always cool to have feedback from people uh, who are not us to being able to improve. Uh, and so we are starting to have more and more developer. Uh, don't be afraid to go on the community. Uh, so this is a forum um, dedicated to WeWeb and there is a developer corner. So if you want to exchange with uh, the team or with other user developing component, uh, feel free to exchange here. We already have uh, some people very active on this part of WeWeb. Uh, developing custom components, uh, but our customer are just uh, enthusiast about the tool. So do not hesitate to, to open any discussion, uh, even if you just want to ask questions or just to show what you have done, uh, if there is something you are proud and want to share. Uh, I think that's it. Um, I've not talked about everything. There is, um, maybe what I can do is go through all the documentation. Um, yeah, something I've not uh, talked about is uh, you can have another special component, which is a layout, which is a way to create a drop zone uh, on an element. So to have a, an array of children, um, this is very useful if you have a component, which is, for example, basically our a container element, as you see here, you see there is a drop zone and I can drop any component inside it. If you want to do something similar to that or just have a part of your component, which is having a drop zone, um, we have uh, this special component. So I can show you how it's looking like just going through um, the Flexbox component, which is the most basic version you can see uh, of this feature here you see i just have a layout and i just uh, provide the path in the content which need to hold uh, all the children uh, properties and then everything else in the flexbox it's in the flexbox it's just binding some uh, properties so that uh, you can uh, where is my counter here you can have all this uh, choose uh, alignment, the gaps, the justify and stuff like that. This is just a wrapper around uh, flex uh, CSS uh, properties. But uh, for example, uh, it can be very powerful. I don't think I have time today to talk about that, but it can be very powerful if you want inside your components to have something uh, repeatable. Uh, so the data grid is using it in an advanced way, for example. So that uh, when you are, maybe not everybody knows the data grid, but here the data grid is using a, a layout. Here we go. Don't break what I've done. Okay. Um, and here it's the fact that it's um, a layout with a repeat stuff. It lets me, like when I configure something, all the different row are changing the same. And this is one of the advanced 
a feature uh, useful for um, what you can do with the Google layout component. If this is something you may be interested in, you can take a look at the Flexbox or Data Grid or drop me a message or plan a topic about it uh, on community. But this is one of the yeah. cool things. Oh, we could definitely maybe do another live with yeah, that about more components advanced. later. Yeah. Some use case about what we can do, what. Uh, also, a bunch of other property very useful is the fact that it's just a key to add on your configuration to make your uh, property bindable. So to, to make uh, this plug icon appear and let user use formula to your component. Um, just be aware that when you do that, it's, it means that the property can change during uh, the application uh, running, uh, can have any value because people, they tend to pass very strange stuff through formula. So your component need to be um, uh, like uh, to support anything. We can be through at it, be very careful to check the different type of what you receive, which is basically you open it to people can pass me whatever they want. And I just need to check that they are passing something I can use. Uh, and I need also to being able to react to this change which can be like, for example, if this is an option to a third library, because maybe you need to um, redraw something or reload the plugins when one of the option is changing, or maybe you don't have to do something this complicated because this is just something responsive on your design. And here, if I change my color, it just change my CSS and it's working because it's view. But just be aware that making it bindable mean you don't have um, you don't have the mastering of uh, what can be passed and how and when it will be changed. Uh, and you have the same for responsive. So the fact that if you change the breakpoint, you can have different value uh, and the same also to being stateful. Uh, there is possibility to pass custom states to your uh, children, which can be useful, for example, to have a tab with active state or as a paginator of that, having a, a text, the current page uh, text element is displayed differently because you have a different state. A uh, lot of stuff is uh, available. I think I can uh, talk about uh, what we can do with we web component for hours and hours. So I think <laughs> I will just stop here or if there is any question on the chat, I would be happy to answer, but just as I say, I can continue forever. <laughs> it's basically what I'm doing every day. <laughs> so Maybe, feel free yes. Question. Thanks for this. Yeah. Maybe we'll get some questions and that'll be a wrap for today. But yeah, definitely, I if know. people are interested, we could do another live on advanced use cases. Yeah. If we have maybe a, a use case we want to implement, like how yeah. we can do that. Uh, we have done one before with a, a dev uh, from an agency uh, to um, have a look of how he developed a Stripe component. Uh, I can talk to you about one of our advanced uh, components, or if you have an idea in mind, we can maybe do a live uh, about it. So feel free to give uh, feedbacks. Uh, this is a question for you, Kanta. Will the replay be available? Uh, it'll be like right now because we're also streaming on YouTube. So it become a YouTube video just when I hit uh, finish. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully you can find oh, yeah. it on the YouTube. Uh, on our channel, let me send you the link. But yeah, of course. And as always, uh, feel free to ask on the community uh, if you have any question. Uh, either people from the team or other developer will be happy to answer your question. Yep. And so sorry I for think... my record voice. <laughs> Normally, I'm more enthusiastic. I'm a bit sick today. Yeah, I mean, it's the beginning <laughs> of winter. So yeah, winter totally... time. <laughs> Winter is coming. Winter is coming. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Same time. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, no, it was really okay. Thank, thanks a lot already. So, yeah. see you, people. Maybe next week. I'm not sure. Joyce will uh, be able to answer if we, if we are doing live because we'll be both of us, Joyce and me, in uh, Athens, Greece, with uh, apparently a, a bad connection. So maybe we'll do a live. <laughs> okay. Joyce said that we'll do a live. So see you next week, Friday. <laughs> How to build a secure web app that scales. Mm, actually, that's a really good topic. Yeah. So yeah. See you next Friday, wow. same time, 3 p.m. Paris time. And yeah, have a great chat. weekend, people. <laughs> Bye. Bye.